Okay, let's finish this series. Let's finish this. We're going to be tackling the combinations and permutations question. And look, they ask this every year, usually at the end of the paper. And what they're asking you to do is they're asking you to use your knowledge of permutations and combinations to solve problems where they ask you to make different selections or uh, arranging objects with all these random various limitations and various scenarios. And I would say the only thing you really need to understand, and there's so much out there for you to understand, is what is the difference between a permutation and a combination? And I'll go through it a little bit, but there's so much content out there. We're, just, we're focused on the questions here, okay? This is the whole point. We're focused on the questions. So you've got all of these questions here. So I've put them all from five years of past where there's 30 different questions, 30 different questions. So you go through the questions and you start to get a feel for how they like to ask this question. And let's say if you don't know how to do it, well then you look at the answer and you, you see that you've got it wrong and you're like, oh shit. Well then you spend the time to try and figure out the answer, try and understand the answer. And once you understand the answer, then you can retry the question and get it right. And let's say if there's, you just, you just can't understand the answer. Well, use this, use this resource, use the comment section, go down there and like ask, Hey, I was doing question 25 on the worksheet and, uh, I couldn't do B. I just couldn't do it. And can you help me and help each other? And I'll be there and I'll, I can help as well. Cause it seems like you guys do struggle with this question. Um, so you've got all of them there and go through them and and you'll get a good idea your brain is so good at recognizing patterns like you when you go through this like your brain is so good at recognizing patterns you'll see you'll just get a feel for it I can't really explain it anyway so you've got them there so start going through them and getting an idea and you've got all the extracted answers and for uh, the la the 2019 questions I wrote my own answers for you so you've got those there but really in this video, what I'm just going to go through is, you know, a couple of questions from 2019. Yeah. So we're going to go through those. I mean, and I guess maybe before I do go through them, I'll just quickly show you like what the difference is between a permutation and a combination. So really brief. So if you have three objects, ABC, well, there is six permutations of this which means there's six different ways for you to arrange this, or three factorial. And the reason that that is, is because let's say if you had uh, three slots here, well, there's three different ways for you to select the first slot. You could pick an A, B, or C. And then once you've picked one, there's then two letters left. So there's two different ways you can select the second spot. And then there's only one way you can select the third spot. And then you times it together. And the reason that you times this together is because look, when you select the first one, there's then for that one selection, there's then two different possibilities. And if you you would select B, there's then two different possibilities for the second one. That's why you multiply it. Okay? Because you know, multiply, whatever. That's why you multiply, and I hope that makes sense. So that is equal to 3 factorial, which equals to 6. So there's six different permutations. You know, this could be ABC, could be uh, ACB, could be BCA, and you know, you get the idea. But there's only one combination, because in combination, order doesn't matter. So for the, for the permutation, the order matters, right? This is different from this. We count them differently as a different arrangement. Whereas for combinations, we do, the order doesn't matter. So these, for a combination, are all equal to this other. They're the same, we say they're the same set of objects, you know? So there's only one combination for this, but there's six permutations, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Just thought I'd touch that briefly, but there's heaps of videos out there for you to go and understand this. Okay, so, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some questions. You know, we've got this one and we've got another one here and they're pretty big questions from 2019. You know, this is what? This is 11 marks. It's a pretty big question. Okay, and I'm gonna explain them. I'm gonna go into my thought process and like I say all the time, there's many ways to do this, do these types of questions. It's the way that I see fit to do it. Okay, so we've got a group of six teenagers and they're going boating. And there are three boats. One boat has room for three, one has room for two, and one has room for one. Find the number of different ways the group of six teenagers can be divided into these three boats. Okay, so we have six teens, six individual teens. You know, not every teenager is the same. Uh, let's call them T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, and T6. You know, six different teens. 
and we've got this first boat which has three slots or three um, uh, places for the teenagers to sit so this could be boat one and then the second one has two places open so that's boat two and then the final one has only one boat Oh, mm, boat three. Okay, so how many different ways can this happen? Well, for the first boat, let's say if we start with the first boat, well, how many, if we have six teenagers, how many different ways can they sit in this boat? Well, you have six selections. You can make six different people can sit in the first one, and then five different people, because you've taken one away, can sit in the second one, and then, um, sorry, four different people can sit in the third one. And like before, when I said that these are obviously multiplied together, you know, but... And really this is the important thing about this question is you have to take into account when you're over counting. And you are over counting here because you're saying T1, T2, T3, right, if you pick that for these uh, three things, well, you're, you're counting that and then you're also counting, well, let's say if I pick T2, T1, T3, and you're saying, well, that's also a selection, but in fact that that's the same um, selection, or the same, it's a co there's two permutations, one combination. But it's the same selection, right? There's the same set of teenagers sitting in boat one. You know, it doesn't matter where they sit. That's what I'm saying. So we have to divide by three factorial because this is the number of ways that we can arrange these three objects. So for the first boat, we have six times five times four divided by three factorial. Okay, and then for boat two, well, now we've only got three teenagers left, so we have three selections for the first one and two for the second one, so three times two. But again, we could pick T2, T1, or and that would be the same as T1, T2. So we need to divide by the number of ways we can arrange uh, two objects, which is two factorial. And then for the last one, well, you have uh, only one teenager left, because we've already picked five, and you have one um, slot left. Right, so you only have one. There's only one way to do that. I've got one dude and one slot. Well, there's only one arrangement of that. So there's only one here. And just to note, like, this is the same, um, you know, this could, this is the same as saying six, you know, from six objects, we are picking three. How many ways can we do that? How many combinations are there to do that? But I just like doing it this way. I don't know why. It's just me. Three C2, this is the same. This would be one C1. Right? And we, then we multiply these together because, you know, if you think about it, for one selection I make, let's say I make T1, T2, T3, and this might be a bit overkill, but the reason it's multiplied because then for that one selection there is then um, this many, so this is what, six divided, so there's three different ways then, so there's this three different ways to s select boat two for this one boat one selection, so you could pick like T6, T4, you could pick T6, T5, you know, this those different ways, so that's why we multiply. So you multiply all those together and you'll get da -di -da -di -da. times three. So 60 ways, you get 60 ways. Okay, and just to know, if you did it the other way around, like you started with boat one, I'll just do this real quick, like it doesn't matter, like if you started with boat one, okay, there's six ways here for you to pick boat one. I mean, if you start with boat three, sorry. Well, there's six different ways here times six different ways here times how many here? Well, there's five teenagers times four teenagers divided by two factorial times here. You then have three times two times one divided by three factorial. Well, this is then one times ten times six, which is 60. You know, it doesn't matter which, which makes sense, right? Anyway, might have gone a bit overboard. Cool. And they asked things in this style all the time man just go through and do start just start doing questions on the worksheet you got them all there and got all the answers um, okay so find the number of different seven digit numbers which can be formed from the seven digits two two three seven 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 eight so we got two two three seven 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 eight okay and um, so we want to know how many ways we can form uh, different digits or arrange these uh, numbers with certain limitations and these limitations are for the first case is for i is that the odd digits are together and the even digits are together okay so that means that all of the odd digits the three seven 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 that's together this is how i like to think about it we put them in like a one slot or one box all right this is like one slot and then our second slot would be two two eight 
okay so then we can move these around two ways right so we can this three three I mean this three seven 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 could be in the first or the second so there's two different ways for us for me to arrange that so two times well how many ways can I then arrange these the internal structure of these boxes <laughs> the internal digits right so let's say for this one well there's four objects so it'd be four factorial ways but again we're over counting because I'm 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 counting the when I move these sevens I'm saying that if we have three three seven as one well I'm also counting three and then I move these sevens around so let's say I move this seven here seven 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 but look it's the same thing and I'm also counting when I move this seven with this seven you know like so I'm over counting so I have to divide by the amount I'm over counting for each selection so for this three seven 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 I'm over counting three factorial ways because there's three factorial ways for me to arrange these seven. So I need to divide by three factorial. Okay? I hope that makes sense. Like, okay, and if I was to do seven, three, seven, seven, well then again, I'm overcount, that's why I'm dividing, because for each, for this selection, where, you know, all the odds are together, I'm then overcounting, you know, by three factorial, the, all the different ways that I can arrange these three sevens, you know? changing this one and this one and this one and this one you know they're all the same and they're all considered the same so we divide by three factorial okay times this which is going to be well three factorial divided by well the number of ways I can arrange these twos which is two factorial okay and that equals two well four factorial will be four times three times two so it's 24 ways Cool, and again, so how many ways can we arrange these uh, objects um, if the twos are not together? Well, the way I like to think about this is, is I like to think about slots between each one because they do actually like to like um, what they do actually like to ask this kind of question where two objects are not never together in in the arrangements so what I like to do for this is I'm gonna say that well okay I'm gonna take the twos away first of all and I'm say three seven 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 eight and you'll get when you start doing questions you'll get your own way of doing each um, style or whatever you want to call it but this is the way I like to do it so then we have these twos here and so Let's say if I put a two here and a two here, well then I'd form the um, digit two, three, two, seven, 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 eight, right? So I need to figure out how many ways I can do this. Well, first of all, I'm gonna figure out, well, how many ways can I put these twos, these two twos into one, two, three, four, five, six slots, right? So the, the way I can think about that is, well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six way, six different places I can put the first two. So I can say six, so I could put it here, 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 here. And once I put that in, there's then times five different places I can put the second two. But again, we're over counting because if I put a two there and a two there, well, that's the same digit as if I put, so let's say if I put this first two here and the second two here, well that's the same if I put the second two here and the first two here. So we have to divide by the number of ways we can arrange these twos, which is two factorial. So we've got this, and then for that one thing, so let's say if I put it here and here, for one of those, so one of these, out of those, all of those different ways I can put the twos in, where they're never together, I can then arrange these digits here, these one, two, three, four, five digits around those twos. So I can arrange those five digits times five factorial different ways divided by three factorial. Because remember we're over counting again because of the sevens. Right? Does that make sense? So if I make this selection two, three, two, seven, 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 eight, I can then say, well there's this many ways there's this many ways for me to put these twos in these slots and then times there's this many ways for me to then arrange those remaining numbers around those twos. 
makes sense to me. I hope it makes sense to you. But if it doesn't, just ask in the comments and I'll try and explain that better. So you put that in and you get times five factorial divided by three factorial. This is 300 ways. Cool. Okay, so let's do another one. And they really like to ask this as well. So we've got sort of that first one, and then we've got this other one from, again, 2019. So, okay, let's do this. So I find the number of different ways in which 12 letters of this word can be arranged so that all four E's are together. Okay, so let's write this out. S, what is it, steeple case? Okay, see what I mean? It's just so random. Steeple... Oh, steeple chase. Could have been a disaster. Okay, so we've got this random as word, which I don't even know what it is. Steeple chase. Um, so how many different ways can we arrange these 12 letters so that all four E's are together? Well, it's similar to the thing before where I grouped all the odds and the evens. Well, okay, we've got these E's, two, three, four, in this one slot, and then we've got the remainder, which is the the S T P L C H A S. I need to be careful with this. So we've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we've got these. Okay, so how many ways can I arrange this? Well, there's one plus eight. So there's nine slots, so I can arrange that nine factorial ways. Right? And that will keep the E's together and then but I have to be careful here because I've got these two S's so again I'm over counting when I'm switching these two S's so we have to divide by the number of ways that we can arrange those two S's which is 2 factorial okay and that's all the ways you know and if we had more double ups then we'd have to divide by more stuff but we don't so it's 9 factorial divided by 2 factorial which is 1000 damn it's a lot of ways 1,440 ways so 181,440 ways. Cool. Tick. Find the number of different ways in which all 12 letters of the word steeplechase can be arranged so that the S's are not next to each other. Well, look, this is the same as the other thing, right? Okay, so let's take those S's out. And we get, so let's write out our letter. S-T-E-P-L-E, -E, steeplechase. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Cool. Okay, so let's take these S's out and again let's do the same thing that I did before. So we've got these slots, and then we've got a T, an E. I might need more space. We're gonna have a T, an E, another E, a P, an L. I like to draw it out because it, it's good for me. I like to visualize it. What's going on? You know, I wanna, I wanna know what's going on here. C a H, an A, an E. So we should have 10 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Cool. So how many different ways can I put these two S's into these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 slots? There's a, again, there's 11 different ways for the first S times 10 different, because then one of the slots is taken, 10 different ways for the second S. But then again, remember we have to take into account, you know, we're over counting. S, S, first S, second S, that's the same as second S, first S. You know, if we were to label them. It's the same arrangement of letters. Okay, so we divide by two factorial. And then we have to times by, well, how many ways can we arrange these? Then once we made the selection, it times by how many ways that we can arrange these letters around those S's. And I sort of went through that before. So this is going to be, well, we have 10, right? We have 10 letters, so 10 factorial. But then we have these four E's. So then, again, we're over counting by, for each one of those arrangements, we're over counting by four factorial. So we have to divide by four factorial. Cool. And you chuck all that in to your calculator, and you, be, you think... Um, the lords that you don't have to calculate this yourself without this incredible device divided by 4 factorial 8 million <laughs> 
eight million three hundred and sixteen thousand. You know, it's actually really powerful, like technique. If there's that many ways to arrange some letters, imagine how many arrangements of other things there are, like particles or I don't know, human ideas. Imagine how many different arrangements there are of that. If there's eight million of these this stupid set of letters. Anyway, that's hilarious. Okay. Oh, I, I, I. Oh, I'm hungry. Okay, and the last one. So four letters are selected from these twelve letters of steeplechase. Find the number of different selections of the four letters that include exactly one S. Okay, so I'm gonna write it out again. S T E E P L E steeplechase. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Cool, and we're supposed to select four letters, but one of the letters is guaranteed to be an S. So it's pretty much like we're only selecting. There's only one way to do that, right? So it's going to be an S, so one of them is guaranteed to be an S, and then the remaining ones, well, they're up for grabs. So we've got the remaining letters, which is T E E P L E C H A E. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Cool. So you got ten letters. Now you might think it okay, well then we've got ten letters, so then there's just ten times nine times eight, right? Different ways to put these letters in, then we just divide by three factorial. But actually you've got to be careful because look, you've got E's, you've got four E's here. So when you make a selection for the E's, we're overcounting again. It's this idea of overcounting. We're overcounting because you know four let's say selecting this E, there's one, two, three, like if we were to name these E's differently, there's one, two, three, four different ways that we can do that, Where, but they're all creating the same selection. So we're over counting the E's, so we need to take the E's into account in each, so when we select no E's, when we select one E, when we select two E, when we select three E's, we need to take those into account. So taking away the E's and just thinking about the final letters that we have TPL CH A so let's take the case where we've got zero E's right so we've got zero E's well then there's from this from the remaining letters we've got one two three four five six so there's six different ways times and then five different ways times and then four different ways and remember if we let's say tpl we calculate tpl i mean pick tpl well this is the same as lpt which is the same as you know it's the same thing so then we have to divide by three factorial and that equals so for zero e's there's no e's picked and six times five times four divided by three factorial so there's 20 ways to do that and I hope it makes sense that why I'm taking out the E's because look, if I pick S E one E two T, like I, that's the same. We're, we're counting if we were to do it like I said before, like with the ten times nine. Well, then we're also counting three two. We're also counting four two. Like if these E's are different, four three. We're count. We're over counting by all these different E's. They're all the same selection. So we're over counting by a hell of a lot. So we need to be careful and be more specific and focus on each case at each case. So let's say if we pick one E here. Remember we've got this fixed S and then we've got these three slots, but then we've picked one E. There's only one way to do that, right? There's one E. We're just picking, we're saying this is the case where there is an S and there is an E. And now we have two slots and we have six different ways to pick these letters. So six times five divided by two factorial, which is 30 divided by two, which is 15. Right, for that scenario, and then two, two. how many ways can we do it when we select two E's? That's E, E. And then we have a final slot. Well, there's six letters and one slot, so there's just six different ways to do that. But also, you gotta remember this last one. Well, if we select three E's, two, three, how many ways is there to do that? One way. There's only one way to do that. Right. And now, so for each of these cases, we now add them up, right? So we say, well, for the zero E's, there's how many ways can we um, 
different selections of these uh, letters can we make for zero e's is 20 plus the number of selections we can make for one e which is 15 so it's 35 41 42 so the total so total number of ways is equal to 42 ways okay and that's the answer and that's it so yeah so you got the worksheet like I was saying before go through these questions get a feel for them and your brain will start to recognize the patterns and don't don't bullshit yourself you know if you don't understand how to do it then look at the answer and try and understand the answer try and understand how the hell do they get there and if you don't you can come here and ask in the comments and I'll I'll answer and other people will answer and just help each other uh, get good at this question together you know two brains are better than one man and yeah that's pretty much it there's nothing this is the end of the series and I'm done with statistics thank god and um, yeah like what else do I want to say like uh, honestly these videos if I'm being honest are getting a bit repetitive for me and stuff like that but my really my reward here is this this really does work and for for you for you of the those of you who actually take this seriously and do this approach where we you know we group similar questions together and then you go through it then when you sit in your exam and you do get an incredible grade that's my reward for doing this even though it can be a bit boring for me and a bit repetitive my reward is look when you do get a good grade that makes me happy because this this really does work i'm telling you it's going to work you're going to feel like you're in the you're in the matrix if you take this seriously and you put energy into this way of approaching exams when you get into your exams you're going to you can honestly if you've gone 100 on this you're going to think you're in the matrix you're going to be looking at your exam like i know exactly what to do everywhere your brain is just going to be like boom so yeah anyway that's it download that start going through it and yeah i'll see you i don't know what paper i'm going to do next but yeah, I'll see you when I see you in whatever video I'm making. Uh, peace out.